Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of My Take. Now, this is part two of the eight scenes that I feel have been too normalized in the world of today. If you haven't watched part one, please make sure you do. This was uploaded just last week. This is part two. Now, on to the fifth scene that I feel has been too normalized in the world of today, and that is consuming content that goes against the teachings of God. This is secular music, content of a violent nature or of a sexual nature. Now, one thing I need people to understand is whatever you consume, you eventually become. So if you're somebody who's constantly consuming sexual content, you eventually become that. You start imagining and fantasizing things of a sexual nature that eventually leads you to acting the things that you have seen out. It's the same thing if you're constantly listening to secular music, for example, music that is degrading to women, that has foul language. This is how you begin to speak to people, to women especially, and even you begin to act out the things that you're seeing in these music videos. So be wary of the things you're watching and be wary of the things that you are listening to. For example, the Kenyan uh, guy who killed his whole entire family, and he said he got the idea from watching Killing Eve. He got the idea from a TV show. So the content that you, con you consume regularly could come to haunt you. I remember when I was battling with depression just a few years ago, I started watching these documentaries that focus on um, murder, in relationships like the boyfriend kills the girlfriend or the girlfriend kills the boyfriend and i was watching these videos on youtube i'm telling you it got so bad i got addicted to watching this kind of content and it got so bad to the point where i couldn't even sleep and i started imagining all sorts of things and i started getting scared even of people i started feeling fear even in my own home so the content you consume will affect you positively or negatively, depending on what you are consuming. How does a predator become a predator? Predators are not born, they are made. Some predators were exposed to content of a sexual nature from a young age. It's the same way in which a boy can grow up in a household where he watched the father abuse the mother. More likely than not, that boy will grow up and begin abusing women because this is what he was exposed to. This is what he saw. So he's acting out the images in his mind. Look at what is happening in the US. You have children walking into schools, kids as young as 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, walking into schools with guns and killing their fellow students. These are kids that have been exposed to violence in one form or another in their lives. The kids of nowadays, the video games that they are playing, parents, you need to take note of what your child is watching online, the games they are playing as well. You know, for us back in the day, the, gam the games that we used to play were Sonic the Hedgehog, some of these racing cars things, very harmless. But that is not the same content of today. The video games have become more gruesome, more violent, and more bloody. So the more a child is exposed to that, the more violence he's taking in, the more violence he may want to act out later. What you take into your body is what you put out. I'm going to read Psalm. Psalm 101, Psalm chapter 101, verse 3. And it says, I will not look with approval on anything that is vile. I will not look on approval on anything that is vile. So stop listening to, stop watching content that goes against the teachings of God. Keep your eyes and your ears holy. So on to the sixth sin that I feel has been completely and totally normalized in the world of today is indecent dressing, immodest dressing. The women of today, the way we are dressing is, whew, yes. As women, if we, are to, if we are to be honest with ourselves, there are two reasons as to why we dress the way we do. Reason number one is we want the men to last after us. Tell me I'm lying. You want a man to look at you and want you. You want a man to look at you and tell you you are sexy. You are beautiful. 
I want you. Reason number two is you want women to look at you and want to be you. You want the envy of other women. You want a woman to look at you. You want a woman to look at your body and be like, my gosh, I wish I had such boobs. I wish I had such thighs, such legs, such hips, such an ass. So you want the last from the men and you want the envy from the women. Hit me up in the comment section and let me know if you think I'm lying. Those are the two reasons as women we dress the way we do. You know, one thing I've always told myself is there's always an intention behind every action. There's always an intention behind every action. A lot of the times as women, we do not dress for ourselves. We dress for other people. It is all about ego. It is all about validation. We want other people to look at us and tell us things about ourselves that we don't feel or we don't believe. So when you hear it from somebody else, when you hear somebody telling you you're beautiful, when you hear somebody telling you you're sexy, you feel good. And that feeling is addictive. So you will keep doing whatever it is you're doing to get the attention, the approval, and the validation from other people. Dressing indecently, dressing immodestly is one of those things. You know, I remember one time when I was in Aussie, after I cleared um, high school, I hadn't done well in school. So I had to do a diploma before I could go to university. So I went and did it in Aussie. Some little, it's not, what do I call it? College in Wisti. So um, I went there and um, very trendy people, fashionable people and stuff like that. And I really wanted to fit in. So I started dressing also a certain way. Mark you, I had a very strict dad. So one time he was dropping me there and I had worn some really tight, I'm telling you those jeans are so tight, you guys. <laughs> I, I said, let me just leave it at that. They were so tight. Um, before I, well, once I got out and before I shut the door, my dad told me, I never want to see you in those jeans again. And you know, in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, you are so boring. Can't you just let me live? Can't you just let me be? <laughs> I said, wow, I'm telling you, I, I used to be so small and I used to be so tiny. And for me, um, being sexy, being seen as beautiful, for me, dressing indecently, I'll put it at that, was a way to get that validation from other people. And that's why I know what I am saying. I used to dress for other people. I used to dress for the compliments. I wanted men to tell me you have nice legs. I wanted to be told you have a nice ass. That was me when I was in... Um, that college even in university and even as an adult there were many times i dressed a certain way to get compliments from men and women alike that was me once upon a time nudity is something that has been embraced in the world of today and it's really really sad especially where women are concerned we've allowed ourselves as women to be sexualized and to be seen and to be used as sex symbols to the point where you're advertising a product and you have to be half naked for that product to sell. And that is a law that has been created by man. You know, a lot of women think that dressing half naked is a sign of freedom. It is a woman being free to express herself. But that is a law of man. That is a law that has been created by man. Freedom does not come from man. Freedom comes from God. For you to be successful as an artist, as a woman, you have to be half naked. For you to be a successful influencer, you have to be half naked a lot of the times. When advertising brands or products, your body has to play a part in it. That isn't freedom. That is bondage. So I'm going to use an example of a TV show that I used to watch um, back in the day, Ugly Betty, that was the name of the TV show. And Betty was just plain Jane. Let me just put it like that. She was just a plain girl. She was, her dressing was so modest and decent. She was nice. She had a quirky personality. She was funny somewhat. You know, she was loved by her family and friends. She was sweet. She was just a really good person. She gets this job at a fashion magazine. And the minute she entered that building, she was met with stares, 
you know and as she kept on at that job she was bullied she was ridiculed she was mocked she was backstabbed she was laughed at she was left out of so many things just because she looked a certain way just because she dressed a certain way the fact that she was nice and sweet and kind didn't matter the fact that she was good at her job it didn't matter all people cared about was her physical appearance that is what that mattered and it was really really sad to watch but what's even sadder is ugly betty is a sad reflection of the world of today if you don't look a certain way if you don't dress a certain way nobody wants to be around you people will laugh at you people will mock you people will ridicule you people will call you boring you'll be labeled insignificant and important it's a sad reflection of the world today and that message says that sin is cool sin has been glamorized if you're not at pdd parties and having orgies you're not cool you're not hip if you're not taking it off for the camera to advertise a brand or a product you're not cool you're not hip the product will not do well if you are an, an artist a singer and you don't dress a certain way your records will not do well you will not have sold out concerts you have to be naked and this rule applies to women but these rules are rules that have been created by man and not by god so i want to tell the women of today you do not have to take it off you do not have to be naked to be successful do not conform to that rule created by man or any rules created by man conform to the rules the guidelines and the laws set by god refuse to be used refuse to be objectified there are so many women, ways a woman a woman can dress and still look sexy and still look beautiful without objectifying herself there are so many stylish ways a woman can dress and still look good still look fashionable and still look trendy these bodies that we have were given to us by god and it is said in the bible that our bodies were bought at a hefty price god expects you to respect your body to treat your body well and kindly respect yourself respect your body so I'm going to read from 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. And it says, I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Now when I read this I was a bit like, mm. but then thank goodness for Bibles that come with descriptions. So in the descriptions in the description it says it is not unscriptural for a woman to want to be attractive today however to what degree should women take this advice about fixing their hair or wearing gold pearls or expensive clothes Paul was not prohibiting these things he was simply saying that women should not be drawing attention to themselves through these things modesty and decency are the key words all women will do well to remember that beauty begins on the inside a gentle, modest, loving character gives a light to the face that cannot be duplicated by even the best of cosmetics. A carefully groomed and well-decorated exterior is artificial and cold unless inner beauty is present. The general rule for both women and men emphasizes that both behavior and dress must express submission to and respect for Jesus Christ. So we honor God with our bodies. We honor God by how we dress and how we present ourselves. It is very important to note that. So remember earlier when I said behind every action, there's an intention. So before you put on those pants, before you put on that dress or skirt or shorts or whatever it is that you intend to wear, ask yourself, what is the intention behind this? As I said earlier, a lot of us do not dress for ourselves, but for other people. We want our egos to be massaged. 
We want people to validate things that we do not feel or believe about ourselves. You don't think you're beautiful. You don't think you're sexy. So you will dress a certain way to get compliments from people to make you feel beautiful and sexy, which is wrong. It is wrong. So before you put on that outfit today, ask yourself, what is your intention? So dare to be different. Dare to stay true to who you are. Refuse to be objectified. Refuse to be used as a sex symbol simply for the gratification of man. Dear woman, you are better than that. So for this next one, I don't know whether to categorize it as a sin, but I will put it down as something that really irritates me, it irks me, it pisses me off every time I see it. When I see people write God with a small g instead of a capital G, in my mind I go like, what are you thinking? Plus, which school did you go to? Because as far as I know, every school has taught kids to write God with a capital G. Even the Bibles that we read, when they talk about God, when they mention God in the Bible, you will see them use a capital G and not a small g. When you are describing or talking about these lesser gods, these idols that people worshipped, then you can use a small g. But this ever-powerful, ever-knowing, ever-serving God, loving God, is deserving of a capital G. I feel like it is disrespectful and when somebody does it, they're trying to undervalue and undermine who God is. It is wrong. Write God with a capital G and not a small G. Put some respect on his name. So for this next and final scene, I feel like we can all agree um, it has been completely normalized in the world of today and to a point where I feel people don't even realize they're sinning when they do it. Sexual immor immorality and adultery. And before I dive deeper into this, I'm going to begin by reading two Bible verses. And one of them is 1 Th Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. And it says, it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. That is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. And the next one is 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. And it says, Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I even read this verse when talking about the scene of dressing indecently and immodestly. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. Our bodies were bought at a price. That's what God says. We should honor our bodies, value our bodies, and respect our bodies. One of the ways that many people are sinning um, immorally, sexually, is sex outside of marriage. And it has this sin has become so normalized to the point where I feel people don't even believe that it is a sin. People believe that as long as they're in love, then it is okay. As long as you're doing it in the confines of a relationship, it is okay. But that's not what the Bible says. Sex outside of marriage is a sin. I was one of those people that believed that what I was doing wasn't wrong. That as long as I was in a relationship with a person and were having sex, that was our way of expressing love to one another, that it is okay. And that is why I say it is very important for people to read the Bible, to equip themselves with the knowledge that comes from the Bible. I never believed that what I was doing was wrong. I believed as long as I was in love, having sex is fine. But that's not what God is saying. God says sex outside of marriage is sinful. Sex outside of marriage is not you honoring God with your bodies. So the people living with their boyfriends and their girlfriends, 
or the people randomly meeting people at bars and taking them home to have sex. You are sinning against God and you are sinning against that body that was bought at a price. Now, when you read the description, um, when you read the description underneath the verse, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20, when you read the description about that verse in the Bible, this is what it says. Christians are free to be all they can be for God, but they are not free from God. God created sex to be a beautiful and essential ingredient of marriage, but sexual sin, sin outside the marriage rela relationship, always hurts someone. It hurts God because it shows that we prefer following our own desires instead of the leading of the Holy Spirit, and it hurts others because it violates the commitment so necessary to our relationship. It often brings disease to our bodies, and it deeply affects our personalities, which respond in anguish when we harm ourselves physically and spiritually. And I think that description just sums everything up. Sex is something that has been used and abused for centuries, even during the times of Jesus Christ. Sex has been used and abused for centuries by millions of people. I was one of those people. And I used to think that as long as I was having sex within the confines of a relationship, then I was all good. But then I read the Bible and I got to understand things better. And that is why I will always stress that it is so important for people to read the Bible and equip themselves with the knowledge that comes from the Bible. There are so many things that we are doing in the world of today that so many of us don't know are sins against God, sins against our own bodies. Sex before marriage is one of those things. And the consequences that I suffered because of that sin were so great and is one of the reasons why I came before God, repented of that sin, and I made a vow and promise to God. And I told him, I will never again have sex before marriage. A vow that I, have, I feel so strongly about and that I have vowed to keep until marriage. That description also mentions disease. And that is something that is afflicting so many people of today, so many young people of today not understanding the consequences of their actions. I remember once counseling a girl and talking to her about the consequences of unprotected sex, sex before marriage, the fate of so many young girls and boys today. And I was talking to her about STDs and she asked me when I mentioned even STDs like herpes, hepatitis, and she was asking me like, oh my gosh, what is this? Oh my gosh, what is this? The only STD she knew and was aware of was HIV and AIDS. And I was really shocked that we have so many young people that are having sex outside of marriage, having unprotected sex without understanding the consequences. The only thing these young girls are fearing is unwanted pregnancies. And it's really sad and it's really scary. There are so many STDs, there are so many diseases out there. And then there are so many people who are knowingly affecting others. They know of their status. They know what is wrong with them, what is happening in their bodies. They won't tell you. They will have unprotected sex with you and keep it moving. It is happening today. Sex is being used to hurt others. Let us stop abusing it. When God created it, he had one intention and one intention only. For it to be enjoyed within the confines of marriage, not outside of it. Sex also hurts us emotionally. When you have sex with a man, and I'm speaking as a woman, when you have sex with a man, it is hard for us women to have sex with men without becoming emotionally attached. But when those emotions are not reciprocated, we get hurt. We get hurt. And this also damages us in other ways. It is so imperative that we think before we act because there are some things that can never be taken back. If I could turn back the hands of time, if I could, if I was given the opportunity to do things differently, I would have waited. I have said this in so many of my videos. I would have waited knowing what I know now. I would have waited. I would have loved my body 
valued my body, respected my body, I would have waited, but I didn't. And I can't take back what I did. I can't take back the consequences that I suffered because of my actions. I can't take them back. So think before you act. Think before you act. Ask yourself, is this worthy? Is it worth it for me to do this? What will I gain by doing this? What will come out of this? Stop giving your body so freely to the undeserving. Adultery is also another sin that so many people in the world of today are taking lightly, especially where the men are concerned. We have started making excuses for them. Oh, it's just a man thing. This is something all men will do. Men must always cheat. As a woman, learn to live with it. As a woman, learn to accept it. And as a woman, learn to tolerate it. We have made excuses for men where they lack self-control. It is simply a lack of self-control. It is not just a man thing. It is a lack of self-control. When you read Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, it says, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. So adultery is a sin. A sin that should not be accepted as it has been accepted in the world of today. We have so married, mar so many married couples participating in um, orgies, swapping partners as a way of spicing up the marriage. It is a sin. It is not hip. It is not cool. It is not trendy. It should not be glamorized. It is sinful. Also, when you read Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28. It says, You have heard that it was said, you, should not, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28, it says, you shall not commit adultery. That is a sin in itself. But so is visualizing somebody in your mind naked and lasting after them. And you know, when I read that, I was also really shocked. And that's why, again, I will stress, read the Bible. You know, sometimes you think like when you picture a woman naked or even a man naked and the things you're doing to them in your mind. Did you know that that was a sin? You haven't touched them. You haven't committed, commit, committed the act, but you have imagined it in your mind. It is a sin. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28. Anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. It is a sin. I was so shocked because, again, this is also something I have done. Lasting after somebody and then imagining all kinds of things in your mind it is a sin if you didn't know now you know so you see when you read the bible you get to understand so many things so many things the things that are right for you the things that are wrong the things that god supports and the things that he's totally against the things that will draw you closer to god and the things that will take you farther and farther away from him read the bible get to understand it seek knowledge from it because that knowledge is power even in the bible it says jesus christ himself said so many of my people suffer because of a lack of knowledge read the bible understand it understand the ways of god it will also help you get closer to him sex outside of marriage is a sin adultery is a sin let's stop normalizing it they're sinful and they go against god 
So thank you so much for watching this week's episode of My Take. This is part two. Part one was uploaded last week. If you haven't watched that, please make sure you do. And then hit me up in the comment section and let me know if you feel there are other scenes that have been too normalized in the world of today. Please share with me in the comment section. I really love hearing from you guys. Plus, it's also a way we can learn from one another, engage one another, gain knowledge from one another and positively influence one another as well. Hit me up in the comment section and talk to me. So I guess I'll see you guys next week for yet another episode of my take. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure you do. God bless and see you next week. Bye, guys.